Overseer Hank McLean supposedly destroyed Shady Sands. Or did he? Well, yeah, yes, he did, sort of. He certainly had help, unless this 200-pound man lugged a nuclear warhead inside the most developed post-nuclear nation on Earth, alone, without notice, in one of the most developed cities on Earth. But who helped Hank? Was it the Brotherhood? Was it the Institute? Maybe the Republic of Dave? No. It was the Enclave. But this has had a history of picking lore that was never made official from Fall of Van Buren. One such example being the destruction of San Francisco after the Enclave survivors turned their remaining nuclear arsenal against the city as retaliation for the death of the president of the Enclave. This never became canon though, but during the development of Fallout New Vegas, Obsidian wanted to feature a dialogue stating San Francisco was destroyed since Fallout 2, but Bethesda asked for the line to be removed. I believe that Bethesda has repurposed this original story of San Francisco being nuked into the Enclave destroying Shady Sands as an act of revenge. Now, vault has always had ties with the United States government. Since they won the government contracts to build vaults nationwide, it was a win-win. Investors such as the Enclave would shape the post-nuclear world in their image and gather data for the colonizations of Earth and even space. And vault would line their pockets. But once the bombs fell and those undesirable mutant nations that rose from the ashes came, the pure humans who were meant to survive wouldn't be able to reshape the world how they originally desired. So in response, the Enclave would purge those quote-unquote humans from the Earth from Poseidon oil rig. But the plan was cut short by the Chosen One. Once the Enclave rallied in Navarro, they retreated to the East Coast and once again were defeated. Many considered the Enclave destroyed, but there have been various breadcrumbs which have been leading to the Enclave's return for years. For example, Fallout 3 Broken Steel. The Enclave did receive some messages from the Enclave High Command, which is located outside of the Capital Wasteland. The same could be said for Sigma Squad. They came from outside the Capital Wasteland as well, and there was multiple of them. These were elite Enclave soldiers better than any of the surrounding ones. According to the Fallout 3 Broken Steel Game Guide, uh, the Enclave High Command had sent Sigma Squad to Adams Air Force Base. My second example would be Dr. Whitley's recordings on Edie, which mentioned multiple Enclave outposts in Chicago. Subject E, diagnosis complete. Begin recording. My name is Whitley. I'm a researcher at Adams Air Force Base. Until recently, I was in charge of the Duraframe reinforcement project for the combat model iBots. iBot Duraframe Subject E is both the prototype and the last functional model in this test group. I was prepared to make several significant upgrades to the machines. However, as the project was canceled and all Duraframe assets are being diverted to Hellfire Armor, I am sending this model to the Navarro outpost. If you're listening to this log from one of our Enclave outposts in Chicago, give this unit whatever repairs it needs so it can continue to Navarro. Download complete. Begin recording. Navarro outpost scientists, I am glad that EDE has reached you. You will find several data banks of information on this machine. Please handle this information with the utmost care as it represents the sum total of the results of my research on the Duraframe iBots. There are also several data banks with information on my research into Poseidon Energy and some projects they were working on in the Mojave area. And lastly, one of my oldest references is in Fallout 2. Uh, there's a Galaxy News radio recording that mentions that the Enclave Navy was recalled to the Poseidon oil rig on March 30th, 2076. If the Navy was not destroyed in Fallout 2 along with the oil rig, then the Navy is still out there in the Pacific Ocean. It's waiting for the right moment to pierce the heart of the NCR. So all fingers are pointing towards Chicago being the Enclave High Command. Just think, in the Capital Wasteland, we only encounter a military base and one research facility. Do you really think that the Enclave produced power armor, vertebrates, and other equipment in Raven Rock and Adams Air Force Base? No. The Enclave High Command that was referenced in the Broken Steel DLC is based elsewhere. And Dr. Wilzig works for them at a research facility in California. During the Fallout TV show, Elder Quintus claims that there's a mission 
that comes from the highest clerics of the Commonwealth to capture a denizen of the Enclave who's carrying the secret of cold fusion. Meanwhile, Maximus says he joined the Brotherhood to hurt those who hurt him. The key word being those. This can mean Maximus knows a group of people who were responsible for the city's destruction of Shady Sands. And not just one man. Could he be referring to the Enclave? He may not have knowledge that the Enclave even exists, judging by his peers' reactions when Elder Quintus mentions the Enclave. But he seems to recognize that the destruction of Shady Sands was not caused by one person. Even when he sees the man who caused the destruction, Overseer Hank, he doesn't recognize him or his vault tech suit, instantly releasing him. So the real question is, who does Maximus know was involved in the destruction of Shady Sands? Does anyone truly know? Was it a missile that was launched at the city? The mission involving the Enclave could be where Maximus and the Brotherhood's interests intersect, to destroy the Enclave remnants. When the Enclave remnants base is shown, there is a train station and a well-constructed mini-city. Now, the Enclave have clearly organized here, or have rallied again to another Enclave hub. If you look in the background, though, there's a train station, right? Now, this, this has me thinking that there could be a railway connected to the Chicago Enclave. I know it's a big stretch, but in real life, Chicago is a major train hub. Most passenger lines converge in Chicago. This base in particular, though, uh, must be close to the Boneyard or LA because when Dr. Wilzig escapes from the compound, and we see him later on in the show, uh, him and the dog are in decent shape. If they ran on foot, this base must be close by. It's telling that the Enclave base was built inside of California with a train station and a large compound. So Dr. Wilzig, who was also wearing a pit boy, just to note, was working on various projects such as the Cyber Dogs, uh, FEV, well maybe not him specifically, but there was a super mutant in the show on a gurney, and Colt Fusion. When Wilzig's dog was found by another scientist, he fled. So just take note that the other Enclave scientist was also wearing a pit boy. Maybe the scientist, uh, both of these Enclave scientists came from a vault. So when Dr. Wilzig flees, the Enclave made a public bounty to capture him, and more importantly, the cold fusion vial. So as mentioned by the bounty hunters though, who first mentioned it to the ghoul, the Enclave has reached a point in power that they are no longer in complete hiding, enough so that they are placing a bounty on this guy. The cold fusion vial at the end of the series reads vault on it, meaning that the Enclave has had vault cold fusion technology for some time, which I remind you, cold fusion was bought out by vault -Tec. This means that the Enclave have been working with vault and have access to what they purchased from before the Great War. This begs the question on how the Enclave obtained cold fusion vial to begin with. Either they obtained it before the Great War or from a vault after the Great War. Either way, the Enclave have been dealing with vault -Tec. Perhaps they have obtained it from Overseer Hank and in return they destroyed Shady Sands. This would work as a favor for both of them. Hank and the Enclave see themselves as the sole inheritors of the Earth, an Earth with no room for mutants. My point in this video is to show you guys that the Enclave and vault post-war ambitions interlap. It would only make sense if they worked together. I do not see Hank being able to destroy one of the largest cities on post-nuclear Earth alone. He had to have had some sort of outside help, and the Enclave would be very eager for some sort of blood against the NCR. At the end credits, Hank is returning to New Vegas. Maybe he's going to speak to Mr. House. I think he's likely dead by this point. New Vegas is utterly destroyed, and the Securichons out front have some scratch marks upon them. Maybe the Tunnelers from the Divide finally invaded the Mojave and destroyed it, as Ulysses warned us about. Maybe this TV show is why Fallout New Vegas 2 was not greenlit. Bethesda has plans for the story years in advance. Some people believe that Fallout 5 will even take place in San Francisco. Maybe the show is leading up to the eventual release of Fallout 5 San Francisco. Anyway, here's hoping that Hank finds whatever research the Enclave was mentioning inside of Edie's dialogue, or maybe even meets Mr. House if he's still alive. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless the Enclave. This is St. Donald Binks, signing out.